Then Abbott, I'm going to, uh, I'm doing this for my class at Southern Community College. The geometric dimensioning and tolerancing frame application in SOLIDWORKS has changed in the current release. I just want to make sure you see how to apply it. So there are a number of things you have to apply here. I'm not doing what you're required to do for the assignment here. I'm just applying them to various places to show you how to place them. So we're going to wait and put the datums in after the fact. So let's just say we have a geometric tolerance and I want to assign it, for instance, to this. If I go and I pick that edge right there, and I pick the edge, the leader goes to it, and then I put this someplace. That has an angularity control. It's going to be a control to two things here. Probably we're going to call that datum A, actually. So whatever that number is, you're going to type that in here. And you're going to add a datum. Datum A is likely to be the one that's going to be the two surfaces here acting as a single datum. Looks like this. Now, what can you do with that? Well, it's attached here, but you could just point at that surface. You can also point at the extension line right here. Once you put the arrowhead in here and start dragging it down, it actually will attach itself to that extension line, but you can't go directly to the extension line to do that. Why? I don't know. Um, I think you should be able to, but you can't. Now we come over here, when you pick this now and double click on it, even when you first place it, instead of getting a dialog box, you get a, a series of them depending on where around this frame you pick the little plus sign. Now what I want to do right now is to add a flatness control. So if I come down here, I'm going to say give, us, give me a new frame. Now the new frame Hmm, this is interesting. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make it flat. That's going to be a completely separate frame. And we'll put, well, if we're going to do, if we're going to actually make the um, angularity control 0.01, we have to make the flatness on this a little smaller than that. So we'll, we'll do it. 0 0.005. That's pretty, pretty flat for a metric part. In fact, it's a little absurd now that I look at it. Let's just make this one right here. We'll change that to 0.02. And we'll change this to 0.01 just to make it logical. All right. But now you can see it's attached here. Now there's two of these, which means that you could apply the same thing to this one. But you could also come in here, double click on it, and add something in front, which would be the 2 and the X, and then do that. Or you could come here and say I don't want to have that one in front and that's an interesting okay get rid of that delete it come back out you might want to put it up here instead to X like that either one of those is fine but you notice now it is still connected and that was something that was difficult to do before so that's an improvement now suppose we wanted to put well we're gonna put a, a data reference right here so we put a datum reference there by either placing two datum identifiers here and then I'm referring to both of them as a single datum. Instead what I'm going to do is to create a layer and the layer I'm going to create is going to be a phantom layer. Do I have one? Not yet. Okay. Phantom layer, phantom line type going to be right here. Might want to give it a color. So now what I'm going to do is sketch a line and it's not going to touch here. It has to break off like that and come over here like this. That phantom line can now be identified as a single datum. In order to do that, you're going back up here to annotation and instead of going to geometric tolerance because there's no control. There is a control on that, probably. And that flatness control has to be actually smaller than this one. So let's go down here and make those numbers a little bit more realistic as well. Let's make that five. And let's come down here and let's make that one um, four. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, a datum reference to this. First, I'm going to put a geometric tolerance frame. So if you have, if you're on the, there, you're putting it at the surface. If you go to the line, you get the arrowhead, and that's what you want. Now, you don't normally want to cross a uh, leader with an extension line, but sometimes you can't help it, especially with GD&T. So we'll bring that over here. Actually, going across like that, profile is more likely to be the control and flatness. And this is the most important surface. Everything else is going to come off of this. So this is one we'll leave to 0 
uh, you could apply it. You can apply um, datum references to profile, but in this case, we're basically using it as flatness, so you wouldn't. So we're going to say we're done. Now, when we, we decide to make that datum A, you come back up here to the datum feature, and then pick the box itself. When you do that, it snaps to the box, and then you can place it wherever you want it to go on the box, can you? Oh uh, yeah, you know what? It's, it's, it's always had this problem. I was kind of hoping they'd fix that. In other words, it decides where it wants to put that, no matter what you think. It can be above, it can be a below, but I would like to move it. I'd like to just pull it over because maybe I've got something to put there. But you'll notice, let me try something. Nope. I want it attached, so I don't want it to be separated. So now it's attached. If I pick it now, and try to move it. The box moves. I pick that and try to drag it. Nope, doesn't go. Well, I was hoping that that was solved in the new frame since they obviously did a little bit of an overhaul. So that's how you can attach something to an extension line. Now if you come over here, um, let's say that we want a secondary datum here. We want a datum B. And I want that datum B to be right here. So we'll do that. Come over here. We'll add another datum. That'll be datum B. Done. So now we're going to make that datum B right there. And by the way, you do want a gap here. I guess you can see it. So we come up here with a datum reference. And now here's a case where we can actually put it. Can we? Doesn't look it. All right, we're going to put it on that surface right there. So I'm going to go and I'm going to pick that surface. Now you can see it's riding up, it's riding up, it's riding up. I could bring it down here, but a lot of times you want to bring it out like that. And if you do that, it actually does usually put its own extension line on here. Not always. If it doesn't put its own extension line on there, you can pick the extension line you're associating it with, and then, yeah, there'll end up being a little dot down here that you can use to attach it. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's do this. Bring it over here like that. Okay, so you notice right now it doesn't come up. It's still going up and down, so it's lined right up. Now if I pick this, I can't just grab that and drag it up, but if I pick that point, it'll connect it. Now will it stay connected? Nope. So what I have to do is pick the extension line, pick that, it goes up to it. Now it'll move up and down, or flip it side to side, but it's easy to pull it off of there. The reason you don't want to pull it off of there is you might want to move this view. You move that view, you want everything to go with it. And the way some people put these on here, you, you leave things behind. So right now, that takes care of, of placing frames like that. Put one more datum reference on here. So I'll grab that one. I'll go to the line, I'll bring it up like that. So you notice, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. It doesn't always do that though, but if you go to the edge itself and drag it up, you should get the extension line. The problem comes when this happens, then you come back in here and decide to do that again. Drag it up, bring it over. <clears throat> you gotta get the extension line, click it right. Get that extension line, click it right there, no. Yeah. Well, <laughs> click it a couple times and it does what you want. So there's another type of uh, datum reference that is sometimes used, and that datum reference is when you go into the, the axis of a circular feature or the center plane between two features is used as the datum. If you have a situation like that, you're going to do I have a round part here someplace. Yeah, so suppose you have a, something that looks like this, and you want to add feature control frame to it. Or there's another one I want to show you as well. So we'll make a drawing from this part. Drawing comes in, looks like this. We'll just say OK, whatever it does. And we'll bring that in as your front view, that in as your right side view. So if what I want is for the datum to be that axis, first thing I have to do is put a dimension on here. The dimension is placed first. Isometric dimensions. Just give me a second. Not isometric, ISO dimensions. 
see if this actually works. Sometimes it doesn't. And this time it did. So you put your dimension on there and you it's got four decimal places. You do whatever the number of decimal places, you put the the limit tolerances up and down. But if what you want is for the axis of this, that means if what you want is for the axis of that cylindrical part to be a datum, you can go up and say datum feature, you notes know, to say it, and then put it directly on the dimension itself. Now when you've got it directly on the dimension that associates it with the axis. The beauty of doing that of course is you can now move this around and when you move it around everything goes with it. One other thing I want to show you. If you want the center plane between two surfaces to be your datum reference what you have to do is go to one of the uh, extension lines. It could be either one. So right now B is that side, but suppose you for some reason you want a datum that goes right down the middle as well. If you pick the extension line itself, or if it's not going to stick, pick that line and then bring it up. You have to line it up directly with the dimension. If you do that, what you're identifying is the center plane between those two surfaces. And the problem with this is that I don't know of any way to force that to stay lined up. It doesn't want to connect to this. If you move it, it does that. I think it goes back when you do it this way. So you put it in place. And I have yet to come up with a way to make sure that this doesn't happen. Well, if you move this and you move this, it should go. But the problem is if you move this, now it doesn't line up anymore. So I'd like to have a way, <coughs> excuse me, I'd like to have a way to keep that and line it up, but I can't come up with anything. I can't make a relationship between the two. I'll look into that. It's possible that I'll figure something out or that somebody on YouTube or on the web has figured it out. But this is what you need in order to get this whole thing done. That indicates that the datum is that edge right there. That edge represents that surface right there. Um, no, it's not that surface, the one behind. So that side, that whole side is datum B. This whole side over here is not D. That would indicate a center plane datum that is halfway between those two surfaces. Very unlikely you'd have them both on one part like this. Probably you would have that because it's easier to measure. But you might have the mid plane but not have uh, one side as well. I think that's the best way personally to do that. It makes it clear that those two surfaces are going to be treated as one. And not only are they treated as one surface from the point of view of a datum, but they have to be the same um, plane within one hundredth of a millimeter. It is possible, so one more thing here. We have 13 minutes. It is possible to have datums identified or defined by surfaces that are not coplanar. They're parallel, but they're in different locations. So let me quickly sketch something up that might demonstrate that. So just to have two different surfaces. So it's possible to have a drawing, and obviously I don't have dimensions on this, but you could say, I want that surface right there to be datum A. And I want that surface right there to be datum B. So those two, those two surfaces acting as a single datum can then be used as either primary or secondary. Uh, it can't be used um, as a tertiary because a tertiary requires a single point so you can't have two different surfaces identifying it but it could be secondary and it could be a primary and there could be a third um, theoretically there could be a third plane at a different level as well and that could also be used as your third point of contact for a primary datum so if we are looking at this and basically treating that as though it's the bottom and what you wanted to say was that the top had to be parallel to those two surfaces acting as a single datum. You would do this. You put a frame here, or you'd probably hang it actually, on an extension line. That's what I would do. But you do something here. And by the way, if you go and do that, we'll do parallel. And, well, let's... Uh, do this. So the datum in this case then is going to be A dash A dash B. So when you're done, it looks like that. So A dash B means those two have to be treated as a single 
datum, they're going to be primary, so you'd probably put two points of contact on this one and one point of contact on that one to keep it from rocking. That would take care of it. If when you place the frame on something like this, you want to move it down to the part itself. If you come in here and get rid of that, now you don't have an ex a, a leader in line anymore, you should be able... Nope, you can't. That is frustrating. Um, this was true before as well. I'd like to be able to just drag that on here and have it pull out an extension.